Rebuilding a Vintage Open Steam Launch, Part 8, Steam Engine Repairs and Adjustments and Polishing the Fittings. This steam engine does need some adjustment and it does need some repairs. And the first part of the engine to look at is the main steam inlet. Quite a lot of the steam, or in this case air, leaks out before it gets into the engine. So I'm having a look at how it's put together. And there's a small brass fitting, two fibre washers and a strange looking flange. So I'm going to remove the strange looking flange and I think I'll discard that and make another. As I undo these small bolts, and you will notice I'm not using a Barco spanner for this, I'm using a small BA spanner, but they're coming out very, very easily, far too easily as far as I'm concerned. And I really don't think these are the correct size bolts for the holes. I soon got fed up with using the small BA spanner, so I used the box key, and the bolts came out very, very easily. It's a bit messy around this area, so as soon as I got the flange off, I got the craft knife to work and scraped off part of the old gasket and generally all the crud that was underneath the gasket. I scraped away with the craft knife for quite a while. Then I used some sandpaper, then I used a piece of scotch bright, then I used some more sandpaper and eventually I got a clean surface with which I could work. If you look carefully at this clip, you will notice that the main hole in the steam chest, the one in the middle, is anything but round. So I re-drilled it 7 seconds of an inch and I'm now threading it quarter 40 so I can put a commercial union in there. After I've finished drilling and tapping the hole, I used a powerful compressed air jet to blow away any traces of swarf that may have been left in the hole. And if you use compressed air to blow things about in the workshop, you must wear safety glasses. In this clip I'm having a quick look at what's left of the manifold. I'm going to put that in the bin. What I could do, I suppose, is just use my threaded union and plug up the holes in the steam chest. But that wouldn't look good. The problem is, these holes in the steam chest are of a strange size. They look like 5BA, but they're not. And the bolts that were originally in there were 6BA. And they were a rattle fit. So I'm a bit puzzled about this, but anyway. What I'm going to do is re-thread the holes 5BA. This is a very new, quite sharp 5BA tap and I've been extremely careful with it because the last thing I want to happen is for this tap to break off in the hole. If you look carefully at the nut to the right hand side of the tap you'll see it's moving. That's because it's just glued on. Because the tap is now touching the stud inside and the nut then fell off, still firmly attached to a blob of glue. I will look into this in detail later and fix it. In this clip I'm marking out the hole positions on a piece of brass. I did, however, correct the position of the centre hole and drilled and reamed it a quarter of an inch. You'll see why in a minute. After I'd finished shaping and cleaning this piece of brass, I gave it a bit of a coat of Loctite 542, so when it's held to the steam chest, it's never going to leak. And as the centre part of the fitting is going to be a commercial union, also put in with Loctite 542, this is never going to leak. And you can see this clearly by the lack of leakage when I apply compressed air to it. Somewhere on the way to the engine from the superheater, I'm going to put one of these. This is a slide valve regulator. If you've watched a few of my videos, you'll notice I've used these before. With this type of regulator, it is very important to make sure you have an oil supply before the regulator. That way the port face doesn't get scored. It's now time to clean up the steam fittings and I'm cleaning the pressure gauge with a piece of brass or wadding as you can see here. I did not put the pressure gauge in the acid bath with all the other components. Here's the siphon from the pressure gauge and it's looking quite clean now. But I'm not going to go mad with all these fittings. I do not want them to look too shiny. Just clean without any corrosion on them. A quick note that I've probably mentioned before. When you fit a pressure gauge siphon to a pressure gauge Always support the pressure gauge with a spanner and then use another spanner to tighten the nut. So here are all the clean parts. The boiler bands, followed by the pressure gauge and siphon, and all the other bits. And now back over to the engine. This is the exhaust side of things. And again, it's not very good, it leaks. But this is a quick fix. Nothing that a bit of 542 and a couple of washers won't put right. The only problem really is the thread on the pipe fitting is just a little bit too long for the flange that mounts onto the cylinder. So just another washer stopped it from leaking. 
These are very small jobs, but they're very accumulative. If you don't take care of them, it's very frustrating when you run the engine and there's steam and oil residue coming out from everywhere. The job I'm currently on with with the engine is not really essential, but I could not live with a round head bolt in one of the crossheads and a flat head bolt in the other one. So I fitted a matched pair of 5BA bolts into both of the crossheads. These bolts are quite tight in the 5BA thread in the crosshead, which is a good thing really because they need to be. If they were slack, they would fall out. I work on small steam engines frequently, so I've developed a feel for not stripping the bolts. So that's another little job done on the engine. A quick test run tells me that everything's okay. Time now, I think, to have a quick look at the bottom end of the engine. Yes, there's quite a lot of play in the crankshaft. I might have to do something about this later. But for the moment, I'm just going to leave it this way and get on with a lot of other work that needs to be done. I'm going to have to have the steam chest cover off to fix the stud. I don't think that's going to be too difficult. I'm just checking how tight the big ends are. Again, I'm being very careful not to over tighten and over stress the bolts but they are quite slack. And what I found was, when I tightened up the bolts, the engine stiffened up slightly, which means that the big ends are in tolerance. If they were hopelessly worn, no amount of tightening the big end bolts would make the engine stiffen up. This engine is never going to win a concourse competition, but that's not what it's all about. It's a very small engine, and I'm pleased to see the crank webs are successfully pegged. I still don't like the wobbly flywheel, and I will be addressing that shortly, but that could be something to do with the amount of play in the front bearing. That's it for now, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.